Look at me. I look like a revolting, greasy mess. I look like a scientist that had an experiment go wrong that blew up in his face and I haven't bothered to clean myself off yet. But I don't look as bad as the five movies we're going to talk about today. The five biggest pieces of garbage that have contaminated the big screen throughout 2023. This is, again, not exactly a moisties because I didn't moist meter most of these films. I was actually so upset and offended by watching them that I came home and ranted about them in videos. Which I think speaks volumes to the quality of dog shit that was produced. So, let's go ahead and take a little swim in the septic tank here. At number 5, we have a smorgasbord of superhero films. We had so many atrocious superhero movies this year, I didn't know how to properly divide them amongst the top five. So instead, I've united the Justice League and the Avengers, I've shaken hands with Marvel and DC and said, why not both? So they're sharing the number five spot for worst movies of the year. It's Aquaman 2, Shazam 2, Fury of the Gods, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, and the Marvels. I actually moist metered all of these, but I'm going to briefly dissect why each one of them is here. Let's start with the most forgettable of the bunch, Shazam! Fury of the Gods. The only fury here is the fury of the audience that's going to have to suffer through their time being wasted having watched this. I swear, if a burglar broke in right now and put a gun to my head and told me to tell them a single scene in this film, I would fail and I'd end up with lead going right through my cranium. There is not a single moment of this film that I remember nine months later. Nothing. At all. It's just this, like, blank period of time that I can't remember what I watched, but I know I hated it. Now, I can go back and watch the moist meter and get to relive some of that agony, but the point is, there is nothing about the film that stuck. Just genuinely a waste of time. And speaking of waste of time, let's go into Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. This film just super sucks. The only thing that shrunk smaller than Ant-Man was my patience when watching this movie. It does pretty much everything wrong, and it introduces the most embarrassing villain superhero movies I've ever seen. And I don't even mean, like, modern superhero movies. I mean throughout the entire history of superhero movies existing. This is the worst sidekick villain they've ever introduced. Modoc. He looks horrible in this film. He is written horribly in this film. I don't even know why he's there. That was such a stupid decision. Just, like, a legitimate blemish on cinema. Like, in general. It's so awful, Modoc's portrayal in this movie. If I was a Modoc fan, I would still probably be having steam come out of my ears after this. Th but even aside from that, everything else in the movie is also bad. The story sucks, the writing sucks, the characters suck, and it also is supposed to be the major introduction of the next big bad villain, who's already been introduced, but this was Kang's time to show why he's this major threat. And the movie makes him look like a bitch. Like he loses in hand-to-hand -hand combat to Ant-Man? You're telling me the guy who can destroy billions of like galaxies and shit or whatever loses to Ant-Man in a fist fight? Like come on, it's so ridiculous. So it was completely underwhelming for introducing why the big bad villain's gonna be a, a threat. The, the movie's just really bad overall though. There's so many problems with it. And speaking of problems, let's just go ahead and move on to the next Marvel movie on the list is The Marvels. As I said in my moist meter, this is the messiest movie Marvel has ever made. Period. There is no movie that they have ever produced that is this disjointed, misguided, and all over the place. I really felt like we were watching a first draft that was going through revisions in real time, and then they ended up just accidentally shipping that version. The movie just doesn't know what it wants to be. Its tone is all over the place. Sometimes it tries to do the classic Marvel comedy formula, which it fails on for the most part. It tries to be dramatic, which it really fails on because they don't give any level of depth to the villain. It's still the worst villain in MCU history. I don't know why I'm saying still, it's only been a month. I can't remember the villain's name, I'm sure no one in the world does, not even the people who wrote the script for this film, but I don't think Marvel will ever make a villain this bad ever again and this bland. They'd have to actually try to intentionally sabotage their movie with a worse villain. They also commit this unforgivable sin of just making Nick Fury a clown. Like, in this film, all he is is comic relief, even during the most intense of moments, like potentially world-ending consequences, all he does is crack jokes. He doesn't have a single line of serious dialogue in this entire movie. Not one, I don't think. And the whole film, like I said, keeps trying to, like, do this balancing act of, like, 
drama and comedy and action and all this, and it fails on all fronts. And it has like this entire plot line, this side quest line that actually takes up a lot of screen time about these cats that can eat people with these giant tentacles and it becomes a core plot point. Like it's just so silly but not in like a self-aware fun way. It just becomes nauseating and makes you roll your eyes. Like there's a whole planet where all they can do is talk in song so they sing at each other and that's super annoying. The, f the movie's just really bad. It is so disjointed the narrative is nonsensical and they it's like they just forgot how to make a movie a superhero movie as i said in the review the only good thing about the marvels is supergirl she is the only one kamala is the only character here that actually was pretty enjoyable but anyway and now finally rounding off the number five spot for <laughs> worst films of the year is aquaman 2 i just saw this less than two weeks ago and I've already forgotten pretty much everything about it. It is the most boring movie of the year. I was heavily contemplating making this at least number two on the worst films of the year list, but I thought it'd make sense if I just kept it all here in the superhero category for number five. It is remarkably boring. The movie that is in theaters right now, I don't think is the movie they intended to make. I don't think this is the film they set out to produce. What they have here is this Frankenstein monster of boredom. It is held together by toothpicks and wet dreams, and it's horrible. It is so boring. What a terrible way of closing off the original DCU. It's a meaningless throwaway film that clearly nobody like cared about in the end to like poop it out in the state that it's in it's bad it's just bad it's not even worth seeing at all all right now finally moving on to number four we have disney's wish a movie that had really awful reviews which was really surprising to me because no matter what disney usually has successful hits especially when it comes to animated movies no matter what people will appreciate them and sing their praises but not for wish which really surprised me. I initially had no interest in seeing it just because it didn't look good to me. It didn't look like it'd be a movie I'd enjoy. But after seeing how shit on it was, like more so than a gas station toilet, I had to at least see, is it as bad as everyone was saying? And the answer is yes. It is the most painfully generic movie Disney has ever produced. It's like it was trying to parody Disney animated films. It, it borrowed so much from everything and put it into the most throwaway garbage imaginable it really felt like they were obligated to make a movie and this is what they turned in it's like homework they felt forced to do there's no real passion behind disney's wish all of the songs are extremely phoned in there's no real effort here at all it just makes me question why even make it in the first place. And now at number three, we have The Nun 2. I originally couldn't decide if this should go to The Nun 2 or Insidious the Red Door, but ultimately I decided to bestow this honorable position to The Nun 2 instead because it copy and pastes so many scenes from other horror films that I have to wonder if this is a plagiarism risk. Like, yeah, it changes the skin a little bit by giving it The Nun, but overall, it's still the exact same scenes from other films, like done one-to-one -one almost. It's not even really paying homage as much as it is just like sketching it, like literally tracing blueprints from other films and putting it in The Nun 2 because they didn't really want to try with this movie at all. I think AI played a huge role in making The Nun 2, I really do, to a certain level. And it really feels like it just started borrowing from other horror films because it didn't really want to try anything of its own. There's really nothing good I can say about The Nun 2. There shouldn't have even been a sequel to The Nun because the first one blew ass. But this one, it more than blows ass. This one's like sucking out the whole colon. Pretty much every single horror movie cliche you can think of, you will find in The Nun 2. Unapologetically just put right in your face shamelessly. It, it's just bad. <laughs> like really, really bad. So moving on to number two, we have Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. No one's surprised to see this on the list. I think you're probably surprised that it's not number one. And I think a lot of you are probably surprised to learn that this film came out this year. But it did. It just barely makes the mark. I've talked about this a few times now because it's become kind of my go-to when talking about, like, really lazy horror for the sake of a quick, like, paycheck. Basically, what they did is they made the easiest, quickest horror movie they could off Winnie the Pooh when he went public domain because they knew it would get some shock ticket sales. So, the movie doesn't really do anything. It's not even entertainingly bad. It's just really fucking cringe. 
So the scene that I mentioned a couple times, even outside of my initial rant on it, is one of the first scenes where Winnie the Pooh is chasing this girl around. He gets her next to a wood chipper and then like rips her top off and her titties start jiggling around like it's in an NVIDIA, you know, physics showcase or something for a video game. And then Winnie the Pooh's like this and then throws her in the wood chipper. Like that that's this kind of movie. Like it just it just takes the quickest idea you could think of for like a shocking Winnie the Pooh horror movie and puts it in here lazily. There's nothing of value here. I don't even think there's anything here that's fun bad. It's just truly wasteful of your time and intelligence. Like, it actually just feels insulting to know that you bought a ticket or rented, uh, you know, Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey on Amazon Prime or something. It just sucks. It really, it really does. But no movie sucks more shit than our number one spot, Exorcist Believer. Now, it's actually on here for two reasons. The reason why it takes home the first place trophy here, the gold medal for worst film of the year, is more than it just being stinky. Obviously, it smells. This movie is not good. But, even more so than that, this is an extraordinarily expensive pile of trash. They paid like 400 million doubloons for the rights to The Exorcist to make this tragic pile of garbage. This has to be the worst investment I've ever seen in cinema. Like, this is one of the most expensive doo-doos ever put on the big screen here. And I believe they were trying to make this a new Exorcist trilogy. This was supposed to be one of a few more entries down the line. But this one was so bad off-rip, I imagine they're just going to cancel it. Because where do you even go from here? They knew they needed this film to be good. And it wasn't. It, it, you can't even make a single argument for a fucking 10-minute stretch of this movie that's good. There is really nothing here at all. They <laughs> produced an extremely generic, almost satirical take on The Exorcist, really. It's like they had just read a plot synopsis of The Exorcist 1, 2, and 3, and they're like, okay, we'll try something similar, and put one little quirky spin on it by having two girls be possessed. Ooh. Which I actually think could have been a cool idea if they had executed it better. But it really feels like they blew their load with budget getting the IP. They spent so much getting the IP that they didn't have any money left over to get writers. So then they just had to scramble and just fuck it, do it live. They had the actors on set and they just said improvise and we'll, we'll make the most out of it. It's just bad. It's just really bad. But more so than it just being bad is just how expensive it was to produce it and get the rights for it. It's just wild. So that's why it's the number one worst film of the year. Uh, that's really about it. See ya.